All right, guys, in today's video, we're talking about the release dates of the next generation consoles, both the PlayStation 5 and the next gen Xbox, because we have a new report to go over that seems to let us know when exactly we can expect these consoles to actually launch. This report just came out today, so I know you guys are going to be very interested in hearing this news. We're also talking about PlayStation 5 pre-orders as Sony is allowing those of us who are hoping to get our hands on one day one to actually sign up for a chance to be one of the first to pre-order this console directly through their website, which I find interesting. And finally, I just want to talk a little bit more about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and some of the features it will be utilizing on the PlayStation 5. Really sounds like the game is going all out to try to take full advantage of everything the PlayStation 5 is going to offer, which is very exciting, especially if it's a game you are looking forward to. So this is what we're going to be going over in today's video. If you could do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification icon as well. But starting here with the latest report about the release date of these new consoles, it says here Sony is still keeping its cards close to its chest regarding the PS5 release date, but a new report on Video Game Chronicle has made an interesting case for a mid-November launch for the new game's console. The website's retailer sources have indicated that the PS5 will be released in mid-November, and what's more, Sony has reportedly booked a substantial marketing spend for these seven days kicking off on November 13th. So what's interesting about that November 13th date is it does fall on a Friday, which is the most likely day for a new console to be launching. It's also the same day that Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is launching, and many of us have speculated ever since we learned that that is the launch day of this game that is heavily associated and marketed alongside PlayStation, that it would actually be launching the same day as the PlayStation 5. So we have more evidence here backing that up, pointing to that actually being the case. It goes on to say, however, the same sources have indicated that Microsoft will be first out the gate with the Xbox Series X, possibly in the first week of November. Gamer Network's Christopher Dring commented, this is why we're waiting so long to hear about pre-orders and software lineup. Companies are waiting until they can be as sure as they can about what they can deliver to consumers. It's a complicated time, and you would typically place a strong bet on PS5 arriving somewhere in the middle of November, but things can change very quickly. The site goes on to point out that this suggested time frame would also mean that games such as Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Cyberpunk 2077, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla would be able to launch alongside the PS5, plus Black Friday is also around this time, which has its obvious benefits for Sony. Ideally, you'd want to launch before the end of November if you want to capitalize on the Christmas sales window, as getting your product out before the final payday of the year is a key move. Indeed, after Black Friday, the biggest sales day of the year for online retail tends to be Cyber Monday, which is usually the first Monday in December. However, Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmad has warned that CV may yet cause issues for the PS5 regardless of when it actually comes out. We expect Sony and Microsoft to launch next generation consoles as planned this holiday despite disruption to the supply chain earlier this year due to CV. And so I think he mentioned something because it doesn't actually uh, list it here, but I think he did mention something about how they're going to use air travel this time, which is, I think, more expensive, but it's something that they may have to do to ensure that they can meet the demand. Although I'm going to be completely brutally honest with you guys right now, I'm really just not sure how high the demand for the next generation Xbox is going to be. However, they still have yet to reveal the Series S model, so maybe they're expecting the demand to be significantly higher for that model since it will be cheaper and much more affordable. That could very well be the case, but I find this information extremely interesting. And to be honest with you guys, it is not surprising to me at all because really, you know, realistically speaking, knowing that both Sony and Microsoft are going to be releasing these consoles in November, there's only so many dates, there's only so many Fridays, and it seems extremely unlikely that they would not launch these consoles on a Friday. So we have heard reports in the past or some rumors, I should say, from different sources claiming that November 6th, is going to be when Microsoft plans to release the next generation Xbox. We did see a controller actually leak out a retail version of the Series X or S 
model controller. And on the box, it did say do not open until November 5th. A pretty clear giveaway that November 6th is when Microsoft plans to launch the next gen Xbox. But the November 13th release for the PS5 also makes a lot of sense, not just because we know that's the same day Call of Duty is coming out, but because, you know, if Sony does get word through the grapevine that, uh, you know, Microsoft is planning to get out early November, the first week of November. At that point, you have to imagine Sony also wants to try to get out as soon as they can. They don't want there to be a massive gap between the release of the next gen Xbox and the PlayStation 5. However, personally, I don't think Sony would really have much to worry about at all. You, you know, you could give Microsoft a month, um, you know, a month head start. And I just don't think that that would really make a difference. I'm just being completely honest looking at the situation that both of these consoles find themselves in leading up to launch, I think there are plenty of people who are perfectly fine with the idea of waiting a week after the launch of the next gen Xbox to get their hands on the new PlayStation. So yeah, I will be interested to see what you guys have to say. Let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below, but talking for a moment here about PlayStation 5 pre-orders, uh, this is also a big hint coming directly from Sony that they will be talking about this information soon. I mean, come on, they can really only drag it out so much longer. We did hear from, I believe it was Moore's Law is Dead. I don't know how believable this is, but he claims that Sony is willing, if need be, to wait until the end of September to announce things such as the price, the release date, and pre-order info. I really hope that is not true. I just don't believe it. But it says PlayStation 5 is coming. Register for an opportunity to be one of the first to pre-order your PS5 console from PlayStation. There will be a limited quantity of PS5 consoles available for pre-order. So we will be inviting some of our existing consumers to be one of the first to pre-order one from PlayStation. Pre-order reservations will be taken on a first come first serve basis. So once you get an invite via email, we encourage you to follow instructions and act fast. If you are interested in receiving an invitation, register below. If selected, we will contact you via email with instructions and details. To learn more about the PS5 console pre-order process, uh, please visit our FAQ. And so they ask for your PlayStation Online ID. And I'm not gonna go over the FAQ right here uh, because I just don't want this video to turn out too long. However, I will link it down below so you can check it out. One of the more important things you should know about it really quickly is that I believe you can only pre-order one console per person, but everything else, such as the DualSense controller, as well as all the accessories, you can actually pre-order up to two per person. And it also makes it clear that this is for US only. So if you're outside the US, it still will let you sign up with your online ID, but they will actually cancel your pre-order once they realize that they would have to ship it outside of the US. I know that's annoying for those of you who do not live in the US, but that's just the way it is right now. So there's that's probably the most important information you have to know, honestly, when it comes to this. So uh, keep an eye out if you do sign up for this, you know, and you do live in the US, look out for an email that you could potentially be getting from Sony. I signed up for it. I'm really hoping I can get it. I'm actually getting a little bit nervous because they're really making it seem like, yeah, you know, quantities will be limited, even though they did double production. Still, the demand for the PS5 is extremely high. So here's hoping I can get one day one so I can do an unboxing for you guys here on the channel. It feels kind of vital, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, to close out this video, we're gonna talk briefly about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and how it has been confirmed that it will run at 4K HDR 60 frames per second, but can also go up to 120 frames per second on the PlayStation 5. Now they did not make it clear uh, whether or not that's gonna be at 4K. I highly, highly doubt this game can run at native 4K 120 FPS. I would have to imagine there will have to be some type of compromise visually. Maybe that compromise comes in the form of ray tracing being turned off or something like that because they did confirm hardware accelerated ray tracing. I think in some scenes in the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War trailer, you could see ray tracing in effect. It says it will utilize the PlayStation 5's SSD for faster loading and seamless transitions, which is always nice. It will utilize the DualSense's haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, which is awesome. So we have a big third party, probably the biggest in the world, the biggest third party game uh, utilizing these features that the DualSense is going to offer. And that bodes well because, you know, the more we see third party developers and 
third-party games actually take advantage of these features, uh, the better it's going to be for those of us who actually want to see developers use them, right? And they did confirm that it will utilize the 3D audio Tempest engine. So it really does sound like the partnership. Now, don't get me wrong. They did confirm that most of this stuff, if not all of it, will also, except for the controller, of course, will be utilized on the next gen Xbox. But it's just interesting to me that they're coming out here, you know, basically confirming that they can almost immediately take full advantage of these consoles and of the PlayStation 5. We heard that the PlayStation 5 is an incredibly easy console to develop for uh, from developers themselves, from Mark Cerny, and that was their goal. And to me, this just kind of proves that and backs that up. So it's really nice to see. And we know that PlayStation players will get early access to the beta, but I have to wonder if there's going to be any more exclusive content beyond that. I have to say, I think there's a chance that the zombies mode to some capacity, what capacity? I don't know, but to some capacity will have some type of timed exclusivity when it comes to the PlayStation uh, side of things. So that's my guess. We're going to have to see if that turns out to be true, but that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Be sure to leave me your thoughts down in the comments below. Leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.